In this lesson, you'll learn how to use the Include feature to bring in a copy of standard forms like captions, certificates, and parentheticals. Here, an exhibit is being marked for identification. I want to add an exhibit marked parenthetical to note that this has occurred. We know that exhibits will be marked in many places in many jobs, not just here in this one spot, in this one transcript. So, of course, I don't want to have to type open paren, plaintiffs or defendants, exhibit number whatever was marked for identification, period, close paren, every single time an exhibit is marked. And I'm sure you don't either. Fortunately, that won't be necessary. Instead, what we'll do is type that parenthetical once, and we'll keep it in a special file called an include file. Then, every time we need that parenthetical in a job, we can use a command called include to make a copy of that file and insert it at the current cursor position. There's a lesson in the Essential Skills folder called Include Files that will teach you all about how to create standard pages and parenthetical include files. But for the purposes of this lesson, the include files have already been created and are already available for us to use. For now, we're going to focus on how to bring these include files into a transcript when editing. So, the first step will be to position the cursor where the include file should go. In this case, I've positioned the cursor at the end of line 25, as I want the parenthetical to be inserted right after that. Next, I can either click File, Include, or I can press the shortcut key, F9. Now, I need to select the specific include file that I want to bring in. When I created my include files, I chose to put them all together into one case. A case is a folder containing files that are related to each other in some way. So, I will open up the Includes case by double-clicking. And now, I'll select the correct Include file, which for this spot in the transcript is the Exhibit Marked Include file. Before I click Open or press Enter to go ahead and include this parenthetical into the job, let me point out this option, Bring Layout. This option should only be selected when and if you are including a standard page and only one that has a different format, a different appearance than the rest of the transcript text. Parentheticals are not a full page long and they don't have unique settings that require you to select Bring Layout, so we won't check that option right now. But I want you to remember that it's there. We'll use this option a little later on in this lesson. Okay. Let's go ahead and click Open, or press Enter, to include the Exhibit Marked Parenthetical. Great! Now that the parenthetical has been included, I can fill in any information. For example, in this parenthetical, I need to indicate which party's exhibit is being marked and the exhibit number. So I'll press F8 to scan to the Plaintiff's Defendant's Conflict. According to the text on line 25, this is a Plaintiff's Exhibit, so I'll press 1 to select Plaintiff's. Now I'll press F8 and scan forward to the next item. This pound sign, surrounded by Scan Stop Begin and Scan Stop End format symbols, is a placeholder for the exhibit number. According to the text on line 25, this is exhibit number 12. So I'll press Control R, and then I'll replace the pound sign placeholder with the number 12. That was easy, wasn't it? And remember, the Include command made a copy of the original Exhibit Mark parenthetical and included the copy into the job at this point. The original Exhibit Marked file remains exactly as it was, with the conflict that lets me choose plaintiffs or defendants, and has the placeholder for the exhibit number. So each time I include the Exhibit Marked file, I'll be able to scan to those items that need to be modified and easily make those changes. Okay, let's include another file. I need to include a signature page and a reporter certificate at the end of this job. So, I'll start by pressing Control end to go to the end of this file. And now, I'm going to press F9 to include. The signature page and reporter certificate I want are located in the Certificates files. I'll go ahead and select that file. Now, let's say that when I created this Certificates file, I set it up so that it would print with no box lines, no line numbers, and no page numbers. Remember the Bring Layout option I mentioned earlier? Here's where you would need to select it. When I include this file, I want those formatting choices to be copied along with the text of the file. If I don't select Bring Layout, 
then the pages I include will look just like every other page in the transcript, with box lines, line numbers, and page numbers. But by selecting Bring Layout, I make sure the formatting choices will come along with the file. Now I'll go ahead and click Open. Let's scroll down and see what we accomplished. As you can see, I've successfully included a page for the witness's signature. Notice that it has no box lines and no line or page numbers. And from now on, whenever I include the certificates file, Catalyst will remember that I selected Bring Layout. I won't have to remember to select it each time. You can see that the page after the signature page is the reporter's certificate, and it also has no box lines, line, or page numbers. Okay, let's review the steps to include by including one more file. I need my title page and my appearances page at the beginning of the job. So, step one, I'll navigate back to the top of the job to position the cursor where the files should be copied. Next, I'm going to press F9 to include. Next, I'll pick the file I want to include, in this case, a file named Title, which is what I named the include file that contains my title and appearances pages. Next, I need to decide whether or not to select Bring Layout. If it's a full page, not just a few lines of parenthetical, and if it has special formatting rules, then I should select Bring Layout. In this case, when I created my title page, I did create special formatting. There's no box, no line numbers, no page numbers, or any other headers and footers on my title page, so I'll select Bring Layout. Last but not least, I'll click Open or press Enter. Once you've included a file, the next step is to fill in any placeholders with the required information. In the next two lessons, we'll take a look at filling in fields, which are the orange placeholders you see on this page, and probably also noticed on the certificate pages. However, before you proceed to those lessons, you may want to practice the basic steps of including, positioning the cursor, invoking the include command, and opening the correct file. To practice, go into the training user and follow the directions for exercise number 12 in the edit practice file. When you're ready, Proceed to the next lesson in order.